Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to color some pretty sparkly iridescent fairy wings. I have been coloring this page off camera and really enjoying it, but I was going to start coloring these fairy wings and this has been so highly requested that I figured I might as well do it on camera so that I could share another tutorial with all of you. If y'all enjoy videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel as well as turn on your bell notifications so you're always notified when I post new content. And if you enjoy this video, please do make sure you give it a thumbs up because it helps my channel out a lot. I am also now on Patreon if you would like to support me over there. And we are going to now get into coloring these fairy wings. The first thing I want to do with you is share with you where I got the gorgeous image from and it is from Fairy and Fantasy Grayscale Coloring Book by Christine Karen. There is a flip through on my channel of this gorgeous book and I'll make sure that I link that in the upper right hand corner in case you are interested in getting this gorgeous book for your own. And what I did was I just opened up the book and I found the image and what I like to do is take my toned tan paper which is a Strathmore paper. I'll also link that down in the description if you're interested. But it's an amazing paper and it's so wonderful to color on with my Prisma colors. And it really just makes the white pop and just everything that's white really stand out. It helps you to create gorgeous highlights. I can't wait to see what these fairy wings look like when I'm done with them. But anyways, I take this page and I put it in my printer and well not this page but the page that we're coloring so I take whatever image I want and I actually uh, tear out a page of my Strathmore toned tan paper if you've watched my previous grayscale videos you'll see exactly which paper I'm using but I tear it out and then I use a paper cutter and I cut it down to size so that it'll fit into my printer and it prints the gorgeous image right onto this paper and this is what it ends up looking like. So I've got two of my Posca pens and then of course I've got my white. I went and got gray so that I could use this for some shadowing. This is my 10% French gray. Okay let's go ahead and color the fairy wings. I've got my Trusty white Prismacolor, which is, of course, PC938. Y'all should have that one memorized by now, right? Okay, so let me see if I'm in frame. And we are just going to start right here, and we are just going to start shading all this in in white. And if you can see on the grayscale, this area is actually a little bit darker. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually go over this area again with the gray, which is what I'm using as kind of a darker version of white. And that's generally what you would do whether you are using a grayscale image or coloring a grayscale image or not coloring a grayscale image, even if you're doing it on white paper, to be able to get all those shadows and such, you would use grays. So we are just coloring this in like this. Now this is just our first layer, but we don't want to lay down too much. But I like to get rid of a lot of the ink that you can actually see on the paper. And that's where I come in and I use, I'm going a little bit outside the lines just for that reason. Okay, so now I am going to get my, this is 10% French gray, it is PC 1068, and I'm going to just come over these areas. See, this is, this is a very light, light gray, and so it is still going to create that kind of iridescent look, but it's going to help me to get rid of the lines that are actually on the image a little bit. And it still looks white. So I'm really just following the grayscale and what the grayscale is telling me to do. And if you've colored grayscale before or you saw my previous tutorial, that is how the grayscale works. 
it will show you exactly where you want to place your lines or and and the areas where you want to color like over here I just kind of went over there and I kind of lined it because I'm trying to get rid of this color and the gray is helping me to do that much more so than the white did just because it's a darker shade of the white so I'm just trying to get rid as much of the lines as I can Maybe I should have sharpened my pencil a little bit more before I started this. You guys know I always use my favorite pencil sharpener, my Doll 133. And I'm just going over them with a second layer. And now it is really starting to work. Now, if you remember, this is where the darkest of the grays were. So that is why I'm going over just these areas. I'm just going to keep coming over this here until I can get rid of all those lines. Because I don't want to see those lines there anymore and I kind of just want to create my own in those areas I'm actually thinking of adding a little bit more color to these on top of the white. We'll see where we go with that. You guys know I always do that. Those of you that watch me all the time, you know that I start out at one place and I end up in another. <laughs> all the time. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to get rid of all of the lines still on the paper. I may not even need my Posca. So now I have picked my colors so that I could try to make this look more iridescent than anything else. And I think it's really going to look cool because it's kind of really going to bring out her makeup. But I've got Lilac and it is PC956. And then I have my Cloud Blue, which is PC1023. And then I have Deco Pink, which is PC1014. And I'm just, I don't know where I'm going with this yet, but I'm going to start coloring and kind of just make these colors kind of intertwine, I guess, with one another so that they could end up being kind of all blended in together. And I'm just doing this right over where I had the white and the gray. And I laid the white and such down just so that I could get that base so that I could use up some of the tooth of the paper. And so that when I come back and I use these other colors, I'm not going to have to lay as much down. But I'm just going through with the lilac and I'm just kind of laying this around. And I think while I do this, I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up to music right now. So now I have quite a bit of that lilac laid down just kind of sporadically over the wing. And so now I'm going to come back with, let's go ahead and do the pink first. And I've got 
deco pink. And now I want this to be kind of iridescent, but I don't want it to be dark. So that's why I'm going with these pretty pastel colors. And I'm just going to do the same thing with this. I'm wondering if I may need a pink that is just, yeah, I think I'm going to need a pink that may be a little bit darker than this one. Yeah, this one's not going to show up on the tone tan. So instead of using that deco pink, which was really, really pastel, because I want it to kind of show up and it's not really showing up on the tan tone paper. If I was using white, it would totally show up, but because I'm just trying to get some kind of coverage and I want to be able to see the variation in the different iridescent colors that I'm using, I'm going to try to mix hot pink with this pink rose. So I'm going to start laying some of the lighter pink down. And see this one doesn't show up a whole lot either. So I'm just going to very lightly come in with the hot pink and lay this over it. So I'm just kind of mixing those colors together. Because I think the hot pink, if I used a lot of pressure and kind of really laid this one down, this one would be too much. So I'm just kind of going around where I laid the purple, or what was that, lilac. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to use my, what was this, ro pink rose. And I'm going to go over this a little bit because I don't want that darkness of the pigment that is in that hot pink to stand out too much. And see how it's just kind of changing the color and just bringing it down a little bit? Oh, that's so pretty. If you can't, if you have the 150 set of Prismacolors and you can't find the color that you want exactly, this is what you can do to just kind of create your own color. I mean, that's the whole purpose of them, to mix colors and find the colors you want for whatever it is that you're coloring so that you can make the perfect shade. I was able to get by for a very long time with, I believe it was the 36 set of Prismacolors. That is what I used for the first three years before I ever had a big, huge 150 set. And that's why you can get by with using those for so long because if you don't have the exact color that you want, you just take two of the colors and you blend them together. And when you do that, it just creates a whole nother color. And it's not, you could do that with any set of pencils, not just Prismacolors. Okay, so now since it's a little bit too dark, I'm gonna come back in with my lighter pink, the pink rose, and I'm just going to kind of blend this through. See how it just kind of blends it out? And it also blends it into the purple. And I'm going to bring this lighter pink and I'm going to kind of come here where the gray was and go over that a little bit just to kind of try to pull it all through. And see, when I started this, I had an idea, but I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And then as I start coloring, I just kind of go with whatever I think is right and it comes out a certain way and I usually end up really loving it so now we're gonna take the cloud blue and we are gonna start my cloud blue is PC 1023 in case you're wondering I don't know how many of you keep your pencils in number order I don't but I know that somebody had asked me if I when I was saying what the colors were if I could um, always let you know what the numbers are and I don't know, I just always go by the color name. But we're just going to lay this down and see if we could get enough of this down here to actually see the blue in the areas that I didn't already color and see if we are going to need an even darker blue. We may need a darker blue. 
So I laid down quite a bit of blue with the cloud blue, and because I don't think it was blue enough, I'm going to come in here with the Caribbean Sea, just like I did with my hot pink, and I'm going to lay this down so that it shows up a bit more, and then I'm going to come back over it with my cloud blue to kind of lighten it up, just like I did the last time. And I'm laying this in the areas that I didn't have any color. And if you're coloring this image on the tone tan paper like I am, you'll be able to tell where you don't have any color because the tan part of the paper or where you laid the white will really still be standing out a lot. And then you would just go right over that. And I'm probably going to come back with the lilac in some of these areas. I think this color might actually be perfect for what I'm trying to do. I kind of like the darker shade of blue. And this will show you guys, as with all my other videos, that when you start something, you don't always have to know exactly what you're doing. Because as you start going with it, you'll just kind of come up with other ideas and add things in and change things up. And then it just all really ends up coming together. And that is what's going to happen here. So I'm just coming back in here with my cloud blue and I'm pulling, I think that was Caribbean blue. Was that Caribbean? Caribbean sea was what that blue was. I don't know if I said it when I pulled the color out. I apologize if I didn't, but I'm coming back in and I'm just kind of blending this through and kind of using this cloud blue now as a burnishing color. And I'm not burnishing all the way because I'm not done laying down colors. I'm trying to lay them down really slowly just because I'm not sure what I want the final outcome to be yet and because I know a lot of you that follow me are beginners and you want to be able to follow the video and it's much easier when they're slow. And if you're just following along and you need to stop the video, you could always stop the video, catch up, speed it back up, or use the cursor uh, cursor of the video and just kind of flip around to get to the point that you need to be at. And I think that we're finally getting enough pigment down on the paper. So now I am going to come back again with my lilac and I'm going to add some more of this lilac in here. And I had a lot of it at the tip. I think that I'm not going to end up using my prism, my not my prisma colors, my um, Posca pens, because I really like how this looks without them. And I don't want to add anything to it that is going to take away from it to make the outside look too coarse, if that makes sense. But adding in this lilac is making such a huge difference. Look at that. I'm just using it to kind of fill in all the, all in between the blue and the pink. And as I continue this, we're just going to go ahead and speed this part up to music right now.
if you look at this, you could see that I colored her dress in gold. And so I've really got none of the colors in her wings to be able to bring in her dress. But it doesn't really matter because I am going to use the color of her wings. Like, if you can see, I kind of have those color variations in her face with her makeup. And then as I continue to color the picture, I'm going to use these colors to kind of create balance across the page. It will be in her wings and then it will be in other parts of the photo as well so that everything just kind of comes together at the end. But I think that so far it looks really, really pretty. And so let's continue with what we were doing. I think that so that I could add just a little bit of so that it kind of brightens it up and to bring in a little bit of what I have in her dress. I'm going to use my little miniature cream pencil. I don't know if I have another cream. I'm hoping you guys can see what I'm doing because sometimes when I color with stubs of these pencils, my hand tends to get in the way. So I'm going to try my hardest to hold my pencil to the side and I'm just going to add a little bit of this cream in the centers just to kind of bring the colors that I have over here in this part of the dress over into the wings. And then when I continue to work on the rest of the page, like the butterflies and such, I'll be using these colors that are in the wings to kind of bring in other things. And so that way it all just comes together. But this should add a little bit of color to just really make this stand out. just brought the colors from her dress into her wing and just by doing that one little thing and just kind of adding that color in certain places and kind of blending in all of the other iridescent type colors I just kind of brought everything together it created that balance that we really needed between the colors that are already in her makeup on her face and the colors that I used for her dress and so now we have a fairy wing where all of those colors have just kind of been brought together. And I think that I may just add one more layer of each color. And I'm going to do that now as I speed this part up to music. with the pink rose and everywhere I laid the pink I'm just going to come back and try to just pull this through with the other colors because I want to lighten up that hot pink that I laid down because the hot pink alone is just really not the color I'm going for But I think it's about done and I think it looks really pretty. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay down a little bit more cream. And now that I have so many layers, the cream, no matter where I lay it, is going to just kind of creep its way in there 
into these little, like see here how I had a little line in between the separation of colors. It just kind of lays down exactly where it's supposed to. And in here where I had a space where there was no color and the white was still, still a little bit showing through. But the cream just really brings it all together and gives it the look that I was looking for. And if you can see, I'm kind of taking the cream and I'm going over the other colors too because it won't lay down there. It'll just kind of bring all those colors together. Now that I have so many layers, it's just going to lay down exactly where I originally had placed it when I still had layers left to the paper. But the layers are pretty much full now. And all the tooth on it. This paper doesn't have a lot of tooth, and all the tooth is pretty much gone now. So... I think it's now all pretty much just burnished together. And I love how that looks. But we are not done because we said we were going to make sparkly wings. So I've got a few. You guys all know how I do, uh, how I do sparkles. <laughs> my favorite thing in the entire world, which is my stickles. So I've got some colors that here that would look gorgeous on fairy wings. And I'm really honestly thinking I'm going to go with this crystal color just because it's very iridescent. But the stardust is also iridescent, just not as much as the crystal. And then I've got diamond. But these are some choices for you um, if you are trying to color some fairy wings or you're going to use this for the future when you color fairy wings. I also have unicorn. But those are the ones that I like and what I would use if I were trying to create an iridescent look. But to me, the crystal, like I said, looks the most iridescent. I'm sure you could see it on camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay down the glitter. And this is going to finish off this look, and it is just going to look absolutely beautiful. This color is gorgeous. As you can see, I'm kind of just going around with the glitter. I'm not placing the glitter absolutely everywhere. I'm trying to create just kind of a little bit of texture with the glitter. And I'm trying to avoid laying it over anywhere that I have the cream. And I'm laying it over only the dark colors because the dark colors are what's going to make this stickles color really stand out. Like the purples and the pinks and the blues because those are the colors that are actually in the glitter. I do have a link in the description below if you want to get stickles of your own. And I always share my link in there because it is the cheapest place ever to purchase stickles. And their customer service is absolutely amazing. And it is where I get all my stickles. And I'm just kind of moving the glitter around. And I think I need some right in here. And just a little bit down on this edge. Use the tip to kind of spread it out. So that way your glitter looks a little more flat rather than raised. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Look how beautiful that turned out. So let's go over the colors that I used. 
So y'all know what I used. I used quite a bit of things and the things that I thought that I was going to use that I had an idea before I started, it kind of, as you can see with all my videos, took a completely another turn. And so we brought in a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go over everything that we used. So I used my white Prismacolor and that was just to lay the initial layers down along with the darker areas of the grayscale. I used the 10% French gray. And so that was to get an initial layer down so that I didn't have that much tooth to go over with my actual colors that I was going to lay down. So then I had picked three colors and I was going to use the deco pink, but it turned out that it was really not dark enough. So what did we end up going with? We ended up going with the hot pink and the pink rose and we used the hot pink to lay it down very very lightly and then we used the pink rose to get the exact color that I wanted to use to make sure that it had that iridescent iridescent -y kind of color but still very light so I basically just used the pink rose to bring the hot pink down a notch and then we tried initially with the cloud blue and so the cloud blue ended up being a burnishing color to kind of combine these two colors where I laid down the Caribbean Sea because the blue wasn't really showing up. So it was kind of a combination of both, but it was more so the Caribbean blue. And then we used lilac, which was the absolute perfect color to create the purple in this look. And then because we wanted to create a little bit of balance, like I always do on all of my coloring pages, and we have used cream in her dress for the areas where we have the highlights and so all I did was I came in and I added some highlights in with those colors with my cream which is PC 914 and that kind of brought everything together and then of course we came back and we used what I have for um, iridescent stickles and that would be the crystal and it turned out absolutely beautiful I am going to color the rest of the wings off camera and after they're done and after I've posted this video tutorial for you, I will make sure that I share the rest of them or the what I have come up with after all of them are done. I will make sure that I share that in my Facebook group for all of you to see. If you're not in my Facebook group yet, please do make sure to check the description below and send in your request to join us. We do lots of color alongs and we all vote on them and we have a Christmas color along coming up very soon here. So don't miss out on that and everything that you saw in the video will be linked in the description below and if you enjoyed this video please do make sure you give it a thumbs up because it helps my channel out a lot and also please do subscribe and turn your bell notifications on so that you always see my content i hope you all have a fabulous day happy coloring bye